What's good YouTube? It's your boy YBC Gabar and I'm back with another video. Man, I know I'm not the only one who's excited for this new NBA season, man. We got all these teams coming back healthy. We got new and improved rosters. We got the new rookies coming in. I'm hyped. Now in this video, I'll be telling you my top 10 players who will take a huge leap from last year to this year. If you don't know, my first video ever on this YouTube channel was the same exact video for the 2020-2021 NBA season. And that list had people like Gary Trent Jr., DeJounte Murray, Karis LeVert, Colin Sexton, DeAndre Ayton, Michael Porter Jr., Shai Gildas Alexander. But it also had people like Cam Reddish, Markel Foltz, and TJ Warren who were all out because of injury. So this year, I'm gonna give you my same exact predictions for different players. Coming in at the number 10 spot is Isaiah Stewart. Stewart is a 6'8 center for the Detroit Pistons who averaged 7 points and 6 rebounds and 1.2 blocks per game in his rookie year. In the games that he started, he averaged 2.9 offensive rebounds a game, which was 12th in the league. His hustle, physicality, and grit has impressed the Detroit Pistons and he is not afraid to go up with anyone. With the potential he has, he can easily average a double-double. The main issue with the Pistons last year is they were lacking a real guard who can really move the ball around and help players like Isaiah Stewart go into the low post, get into the pick and roll, and just have easy dump offs or easy buckets like most centers have in the league. With Cade Cunningham, a point guard who has a strong passing ability and can make the game easier for the Pistons, someone especially like Isaiah Stewart is going to take a big leap. Coming in at the number 9 spot is Tyler Hero. Coming into his third year, a shooting guard who averaged 15 points off 43% shooting and 36% from three isn't what the Heat necessarily expected. After a promising bubble, Hero was supposed to already have his breakout year last year, but it ended up being more like a sophomore slump. One excuse I will give Tyler and the Heat is that most of the team had a huge fallout as they all faced injuries and a huge COVID spread which almost caused their G League team to basically get moved up. But when the Heat fought back and got themselves into the playoffs, Tyler didn't necessarily have a legit role with the Heat and is looking for a comeback. Whether he starts or not, Tyler will show that he can be efficient and have a legit role and stay consistent. That breakout year we expected after the bubble is what I think we will see this year. Coming in at my number 8 spot is Jordan Poole. After only getting 19 minutes a game last season and averaging 12 points, Steve Kerr is looking to expand the shooting guard's role while Clay is still gone. With that being said, on the offensive side, Jordan Poole has almost no real weaknesses when it comes to scoring the ball. Jordan has upside that could put him at a 17 to 20 point consistent scorer a game as he improved as almost all aspects of offense. If this man gets the right minutes and he gets the right shots up, he can be really good. Coming in at my number 7 spot is Dylan Brooks and Jaron Jackson Jr. After one player majorly improved last season and the other only played 14 games as he was fighting an injury, Jaron Jackson and Dylan Brooks are looking to solidify themselves as a strong 2-3 and three to back up John Murray and the Grizzlies. With Dylan Brooks playing defense at almost an elite level and being able to shoot the ball well and score, Jaron Jackson's ability to space the floor and even take over a game, you pair those two up with a top 10 point guard in the league and the Memphis Grizzlies are ready to wake some teams up and let them know the future is bright. With Jaron only playing 11 games in 2020 and averaging 14 points, we hope that he can go back to 2019 self or even better as he averaged 17 points of 40% shooting from 3 and averaged almost 2 blocks a game. Coming in at my number 6 spot is Darius Garland, a point guard who has finally been handed the keys and already took a small leap last season. His scoring went up by 5 and his assists went up by 2 and his shooting percentages were 45, 40, and 85 for the Cavs. His ability to find his teammates open with his court vision and scoring ability can really make him a prime breakout candidate who can have a career high in points and assists. With a score on his side like Colin Sexton who could put up 22-25 a game and bigs like Jared Allen and rookie Evan Mobley, this is maybe the best roster Garland has played with in his short career. Coming in at my number 5 spot is Nikhil Alexander Walker. A 6'6 combo guard who can play both the 1 and 2 was great last season as a starter. 
in the 13 starts that he received last year, he was able to put up 19 points, 5 rebounds, and 3 assists, and shot 41% from 3. Alexander Walker is another one of those guys that have almost no weaknesses on the scoring side of offense. His ability to create a shot at all three levels and using his height to advantage has led me to believe that he will break out this year and can hopefully help the Pelicans make the playoffs this year. Coming in my number three spot is Keldon Johnson. Johnson and the Spurs are looking to fight for a playoff spot next year. As a summer filled with basketball, Keldon was able to be a part of Team USA and with a gold medal with guys like Draymond Green, Jason Tatum, and KD, some forwards that he has been able to play against and train with. A big reason why he was on the roster and got minutes was because of his hustle and defensive ability, but he can also score the ball pretty well. Draymond Green gave credit to Johnson, who was a surprising addition to the roster to say the least. He said, we got a young 21 year old that shouldn't have been here. They gave coach Greg Popovich shit for it. He brought more energy than anybody and that's what we needed. Pairing him up with DeJounte Murray, Coach Pop has high hopes for his young core to stay consistent this year and bring back some winning to San Antonio. Now coming in at my number 2 spot is Kevin Porter Jr who was 7 on my list last year and started the season as a Cavalier but after getting traded to Houston for absolutely nothing, another common Cavs L. Kevin Porter Jr. was able to put up 16 and 6 with Houston and show flashes of superstar potential as he dropped 50 and 11 against the elite Bucks team. 20 of those points were on Drew Holiday, arguably the best defender at his position. With a core of Christian Wood and Jalen Green, I expect another breakout season for KPJ, showing the Cavs that they got fleeced by the Rockets. His ability to create a shot and shoot the three reminds some Houston fans of James Harden. Hopefully this skill carries on to being another Houston great. Now. If you don't know, my number one player on my list last year was Shai Gilgis Alexander, who had career highs in almost every stat in points, assists, rebounds, field goal percentage, and the man, his game just in general got better. So now, coming in at this year's number one spot is LaMelo Ball with his hair on fire. Now I know what people are thinking. Lamelo averaged 16 points last year. He averaged six rebounds. He averaged six assists. He shot 43% from the field. He shot 35% from three. He even had almost two steals a game. But man, he hasn't even unlocked his full potential yet. Lamelo Ball, who's been listed as 6'6 or 6'8, anywhere in between, 16, 6, and 6 just isn't enough for me for a guy as talented as Lamelo Ball. And no, I'm not saying he could have done any better last year because he played great. He won Rookie of the Year. But I'm just saying the leap that he's going to take is something that I don't think I'm even expecting it. And I have him at number one. I really see some 20 and 10 potential on efficient shooting. Now with, with Devontae Graham now gone and Terry Rozier solidifying his role as a shooting guard, this is LaMelo Ball's turn to take over this team as their point guard and get guys like Miles Bridges the ball, like Gordon Hayward, like PJ Washington. I expect so much from LaMelo Ball, man, and I'm just telling you guys, watch out. He might win most improved. Now that's very bold. But in all seriousness, this is my number one guy on the list this year. This your boy YBC Gabar. I just want to say thank you again for watching this video. If you're still here, go ahead and drop a like, a comment if you would like, and a subscription. I'll be dropping content all year about the NBA and the NFL. We'll try to be more consistent. Thank you guys for watching. Peace out.